Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and finally we get the Framework 13 laptop here into the studio. And I've got the AMD Ryzen 7 here, the 7840U version, and I gotta tell you, I'm pretty blown away by not only the performance, but also by the modularity of this laptop. Yes, they're breaking ground or they're pretty cutting edge here in terms of being able to swap out components, being able to expand out storage, memory, and the like. Pretty much everything is interchangeable here. Everything is pretty much serviceable. Something we don't really see anymore when it comes to laptops. So very unique. And I think a lot of brands should move towards this because I think they're onto something pretty special. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Framework Laptop 13 running the AMD processor here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Framework. I'm not being sponsored by Framework. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Framework is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Framework, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the AMD model starts at $1,049. Price as configured here today, the professional edition with the components or ports, I should say, that were given here today, those are modular, and that comes in at $1,604.00. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and we can buy one. You know the drill, folks. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Okay, as you can see, we have a few boxes here. We have the different components we're gonna add in, the different ports. It's got the power adapter here. Let's start with that. Here you get your power cord right there. A USB Type-C cable. So here's the charger, okay? And it's a pretty compact charger. Here you plug in the Mickey Mouse ear connection there, and then of course you have a Type-C right there. So that's the charger right there. And then we have the different components here as far as the different ports and which one is this this USB A so we got USB A we've got one terabyte of an expansion card here we've got HDMI we've got type C and a second type C so those are the different ports that are given here in the package so pretty good right off the bat here next we have the box containing the unit itself so that's everything in this box Pretty simple, but straightforward packaging so far. All right, right off the bat, you can see the diagrams of the different components there. And then of course we get the unit itself. Let's take it out of the box here. So uh, pretty nice size, it feels pretty good. Here's a little tool with the different uh, bits we might need to screw everything and all that stuff, a little spudger part over there. So a nice tool that is included. I think this is gonna be everything you're gonna need to put the components on there. And then of course you get some documentation from Framework right there. So pretty interesting stuff so far. Yeah, I think that's it, okay. So let's put this to the side. And here she is. So a very nice uh, build quality. This is all metal design here. You can see it here. Uh, very nice. Obviously, you can see that it doesn't have the different uh, ports in it. That's what we like about it. The modularity could put the different ports in. All metal design looking good so far. And let's see if we can open this with one finger. We can, so far looking really good. Now all these components are user replaceable. There's a power button right there. Let's give a listen to the keyboard. Pretty good. Looks like a nice touchpad. Everything seems well built on this. Okay, let's get a measurement of the weight with the unit alone. You're looking at 1.341 kilograms or two pounds, 15.3 ounces. With the power cord and the power charger, you're looking at total of three pounds, 9.5 ounces, or 1.629 kilograms. All told, that's the travel weight. 
Now, not only is this great when it comes to user upgradability, but it's also great when it comes to the expansion cards, giving you all sorts of options when it comes to that as far as ports and expanding out storage and stuff like that. That is a real win here, and I think that's a big attraction to this laptop. And again, you can see from here, the side view, and you can see where the different components will go in. So we have a few of them here, as we saw earlier, two USB Type-C, HDMI, a one terabyte storage expansion, that is great to have, and then of course, USB Type-A. So you got all those options here. And you see how this is gonna, this is your Type-C right there, and this is what's gonna be facing outside. So I think if we just put it in like this, Boom, it's simple as that. And we can actually put something next to that. I would say, let's put an HDMI here. So let's try the HDMI and here's a little thing there, boom. And there it is, HDMI, makes it really easy. And as you can see, these are USB type C components. So you basically are putting an adapter in so this goes like this, boom, like that. So now we've got USB-C and then you've got HDMI. Now on this side, here's one that I wanna try. This is one terabyte of storage right there. So this gives you extra storage. That's gonna come in handy, I think. There you go. So that's just extra storage. So let's put USB type A. So we got a nice legacy port right there. And this one will go in like this. Boom. Okay, let's see if the Thunderbolt drive here will work. This is my Sabrent Thunderbolt drive. Of course, uses Thunderbolt 3, I believe, on this particular one. Let's see if this USB-C supports Thunderbolt. And yes, it does. There you can see the Rocket Extreme is showing here. So definitely usable in terms of Thunderbolt. Nice to see that. Okay, let's talk about the display. And we're looking at a 13.5 inch display with a resolution of 2256 by 1504. It's an IPS display with a matte finish so you don't get that unnecessary glare and reflection, which you gotta love. Especially when you wanna be productive, you wanna get work done, you don't want that glare. And of course, this is gonna be a good display for overall use, of course. It's not gonna be great like an OLED display when it comes to coverage of the color gamut, when it comes to color accuracy, but it has very good metrics nonetheless, as you can see here decent coverage of the color gamut, good color accuracy here. So overall, very good. Good contrast, good black levels, good white point. Overall, a really good solution here. And I love the fact that it is a three to two aspect ratio. If you see more on the display, you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. Now, a couple of things to note about the display. This is not a high refresh rate display. This is 60 hertz, so just keep that in mind. And it's also a non-touch display. Now, one of the things about a modular laptop that we have here is you can change out the components. The bezel around it is kept together here by magnets. You can actually change out the display later on, potentially, I guess, if they're gonna offer different options, say a touch option or a non-matte display, say a glossy display with HDR and stuff like that, Gorilla Glass. Again, those are some of the benefits you get with a laptop that uses modularity here to change out the dis different components as you need it. And that's the beauty of this. And my overall takeaway is this is a very excellent display, not only for doing productivity work in Microsoft Office, email web browsing, you could also watch movies on this, consume media in Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and the like. It's overall been a very good experience with this panel. So this is the 1080p camera here on the Framework 13 laptop running the AMD Ryzen processor. You're looking at 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's what this is capable of. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Well, one thing to note, this is not an IR camera. That means you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, but the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So if you want to log in that way, you have that option as far as Windows Hello. That works well. And there is a physical shutter switch that not only controls the camera you can turn that off but there's a second shutter switch that turns off the microphone for total security and privacy i like having those two shutter buttons i want to know what you think let me know what do you think about the video what do you think about the audio let me know in the comments section below
Okay, let's talk performance, and I'm very impressed with this AMD Ryzen 7 7840U with the Radeon 780M integrated graphics. We're seeing both single and multi-core performance here that is very good, as you can see from these results. Very impressive performance for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. You could even do light 4K video editing if you choose carefully, not to do too much heavy stuff there, but yes, you can do it. Now, as far as the Cinebench R23, good single and multi-core results here. In fact, it got over 13,000 or almost 14,000 to be exact on the multi-core results here. So that's going to be very good for multi-thread performance. Not something we normally tend to associate with an AMD Ryzen processor. Very good. And as far as the integrated Radeon 780M graphics, as far as gaming is concerned, certainly playable frame rates if you adjust the settings, lower them, and you'll get some very playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. This is actually pretty impressive for an integrated graphics and certainly outperforms the integrated iris XE solution from Intel, which is in dire need of an upgrade, of course. So this has really been very impressive so far. And good news when it comes to thermal throttling. When I ran the Time Spy stress test, it got a passing score of 97.4%, meaning it detected very little, if any, thermal throttling under heavy load. That's good news. Now, one thing you will notice is on the surface temperatures, it does tend to heat up a bit above the keyboard, below the display, reaching as high as the 60s here. Very hot as far as where it's dissipating the heat, but as far as where you place your fingers on the keyboard, never getting overly hot. So just keep that in mind. So that's the one hot spot there. And then on the underside, it can get a little bit warm under heavy load, although not too bad when it comes to that, although I'd like to see it a little bit lower. But overall, the surface temperatures are bearable where you are using this laptop. That's for sure. Again, here you can see about 59 degrees Celsius. I'd like to see that a little bit lower. And as far as the fan noise is concerned, you're looking at about 49 decibels under heavy load when you're doing heavy gaming, when you're doing extreme tasks here. But when you're in the balance mode, not much of an issue when it comes to fan noise, not much of a distraction. Okay, let's talk battery life, and this has the 61 watt hour battery option. That's the bigger battery option, and it did 12 hours and 12 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test. Now, compare that to the XPS 13 Plus from Dell that I recently did my update and review on. That's 10 hours and 22 minutes, so we're looking at about roughly two hours better on the Framework Laptop 13 running the AMD processor. That also is better than what you'll get on the Intel processor-based Framework Laptop 13 about two to three hours better with this AMD. So just keep that in mind. Video playback was better as well. 12 hours, 43 minutes versus 11 hours, 52 minutes. All told, this is a very efficient processor from AMD. All right, let's see how we remove these modules. So you hold that down and you just pop these out. One, two, three, four. Now let's open up the back. So let's use this side of the screw here. Okay, there we go. These look like captive screws, that's good. Nice well-made screws as well. There's five of them. Okay, so once you loosen the screws, you turn it over and then you lift the screen up here and then you lift this up and this comes right off. This I think is magnetic. Oops, be careful of what I just did. Don't do what I just did. This came off right there. Okay, so you can see here that comes off. And this is what it looks like. Okay, you can take a look at it there. And there's QR codes for each and every one of the components. So you can know exactly how to change it out. There's the 61 watt hour battery. Okay. Let's get a closer look. There's the RAM over here. So you get the RAM one part over here and one part over there, okay? And that's where the memory is. You could put your storage there, okay? Wi-Fi card there, it's a combo card. So pretty much everything, you got the speakers here, pretty much everything. Now for those wondering, here are the reads and writes for that one terabyte expansion module, not too bad. And here's the reads and writes for the included SSD on my unit.
Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger, and the screen goes back 180 degrees, as you see here. So you can always get a really good viewing angle, and the hinges are on pretty good. I didn't notice a lot of screen wobble, so that's been really good. Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, I like the tactility, I like the key travel, really good for typing out long documents, emails, overall, very comfortable to type on, not bad at all. Now, as far as the multi-stage backlight, that worked out really well for getting work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. I like having that on this laptop. Now, as far as the touchpad, it's a precision touchpad that I thought was very responsive. Two finger scrolling worked well, as well as the gestures. Everything seemed to be very smooth and fluid. All right, now as far as sound is concerned, these are two watt speakers here, they're stereo speakers. And as far as the volume, I think it's very good as far as the overall sound fills up the room rather nicely. A little bit more bass could be used here, although not terrible, and the mids are pretty decent as well. I think for the overall sound, pretty good. But I wanna know what you think, let me know in the comments section below. Now, let's give it a listen. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Framework 13 laptop here running the AMD processor for 2023? I love the excellent CPU and GPU performance, the long battery life, you gotta love that. Modular design, USB 4 support, high performance per watt, solid build quality, and the fact that it's user repairable in pretty much every aspect. Now, the negatives, of course, is gonna be the fact that the single core or the single thread performance could be better, the noticeable fan noise under load, there's still no new display options, but hopefully that's coming soon, and four USB-C ports are great, although they are not all created equal. But there's so much to love here, and I love the fact that Framework is breaking the mold of what you think a laptop should be, and as far as what users can do as far as repairability and expandability. It's pretty amazing, and I highly recommend the Framework 13 laptop here for 2023. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and that platform formerly known as Twitter. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.